Heading into next season, the Winnipeg Jets have three major questions that I want to answer. None of them are easy, some of them are going to be painful, and we'll dive into what the Winnipeg Jets might be up to as they prep their off-season plans on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is completely free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, we just really love and appreciate your support. On tonight's episode, I have a couple of major questions heading into Winnipeg's preseason and next season that I think uh, the Jets are going to have to spend a decent amount of time uh, going through and trying to answer for us. Because ultimately, this will shape not only next season, but the seasons beyond. And I don't think, for me, that as of right now, the answers that I've come up with are particularly great. So let's start off with the biggest question, right? Who is Winnipeg's goalie going to be next season? I feel like this question is super complicated because we know it's not Hellebuck, but internally I haven't really seen anyone who I think is ready to take the next step unless the Jets kind of take a bit of a punt. If you look at Winnipeg's um, track record recently of drafting goalies, the Jets have some pretty decent ones in the system. Obviously, uh, Di Vicentis is like the big, big one that I think everyone is kind of keeping an eye on, but past that, you know, goaltending-wise, there's not a lot to really get it ex- uh, get excited about. I guess you could look at Askari Salmanen. I think he has some potential to be an okay backup at some point, but if you're asking him to become the lead starter for the Jets, I don't know if I would necessarily want to go that route. Uh, I think we also know that having seen the performance of David Riddick this past year, he's probably not going to be the guy that I would want to... Um, really get excited about in terms of, you know, goaltending prospects. And if you're looking at free agents, generally speaking, the goalie market is pretty bad. I mean, there's just not that many net minders out there that I think are really worth chasing after. Technically, you could try and bring in, like, I don't know, a Jonathan Quick, maybe um, a Freddie Anderson if he leaves Carolina. There's Cam Talbot, um, Tristan Jari. But, I mean, if you're thinking about those names, like I've said, not exactly exciting. Alex Nadelkovich is maybe one of the only guys that could have some potential upside, but do you really want to sink a lot of money into this position with players who are relatively, uh, uh, you know, I would say untested? One guy that could be an interesting RFA option should he leave the Toronto Maple Leafs is Ilya Samsonov, but I'm pretty sure he's going to resign with the Leafs. I can't see a reason why they would necessarily let him go. I thought he did a pretty solid job for them. Um, and generally speaking, put up pretty good numbers. So aside from that, you know, I'm looking out there and I'm thinking the only way the Jets would really get a decent goalie is probably by trade. And I just don't really know who out there is actually going to satisfy Winnipeg's need of a goalie that's both quality enough to be competitive and also, you know, might longer term be a player that you could jettison pretty quickly. Uh, in terms of net minders, the market this year is just very weak. So my guess is if the Jets were to make a major trade, they'd probably be getting a goalie back um, from another team, right? I don't know who exactly the Jets would even receive. Uh, It's probably like a Blackwood type or something, a a bit of a cap dump, a player who's maybe underperforming, relatively speaking. I think Blackwood's a free agent anyway. So, um, yeah, he's an RFA this year, and he didn't exactly have the best of seasons for the Devils. So, yeah, uh, in terms of the goalie market, let's be real. The Jets are probably going to be finding a netminder who's going to eat minutes and probably not be very good. Uh, I would expect Winnipeg's games next season to be on the more high-scoring side. I think the Jets could concede a pile, not because Winnipeg has like traditionally been defensively poor. I think this past season they were a lot better. They were closer to like an average defensive team, right, which is a pretty huge jump from where they were in previous years. At times, they were even really good defensively. Um, 
in during certain points of the season, breaking top 10 in terms of defensive metrics, but not everything was perfect. And you notice that when the Jets made mistakes, oftentimes they were in very critical high leverage positions where the goalies really couldn't bail the Jets out. So Winnipeg is going to have to do as, as much to limit that as possible next season, but that probably means that the Jets are going to be more conservative and less aggressive, which I don't think is really the solution either. So this question of who's going to be the next goalie, I really feel, you know, points out at, at so many different parts of, um, you know, Winnipeg's present and future. I think long-term, everyone's got eyes for Di Vicentis, and I'm really hoping that he becomes the man in net because it seems like so far, at least in his OHL career, he's been astoundingly good. For the battalion, he was one of the best goalies in the entire league. I think he actually won goaltender of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously a very highly touted prospect. He's put up monster numbers for the battalion. And, you know, the next step for him is really whether he spends one more season in junior or, or moves out and, and joins the Manitoba Moose next season. You know, he might be ready for some pro action. I don't know yet. He's still pretty young, and we all know that goalies can be a little bit fickle year over year. But in three to four years' time, maybe five years, uh, I could see Di Vicentis eventually taking over that mantle for the Jets. I don't know when he'll make his NHL debut. I would imagine it's probably within the next three years because you don't want to let these kids uh, marinate for too, too long. Um, I think Di Vicentis is what? He's like, um, I want to say he's like 21 or 22, something like that. Uh, he is, oh, actually 19. So he's he's actually younger than I thought. Um, so, yeah, Di Vicentis could be maybe longer, maybe four to five years. Usually I would say a good starting age if you're trying to figure out whether somebody's ready for the, the pro leagues is, you know, should he do well at the AHL level? Maybe testing him out around age 23, age 24. That's about when you would expect them to start hitting their primes and starting early. Uh, they're finding out that earlier in their careers, uh, goalies are generally doing pretty well, and and that's kind of the start of their prime. So, you know, three to four years, a bit of a, a bit of a wait, if we're being honest. If Di Vicenti arrives even earlier, that'd be great, but you don't want to push him too quickly. You want to make sure that he physically matures and that he is prepared to handle an NHL workload. Obviously, the quality of shooters and the concentration and, and psychological aspects are quite a bit more intense at the NHL level than any of the levels he's played previously. So you got to bring him in, but do so in the right way and ensure that you uh, keep his confidence high and help him develop and progress in the best way that you can. So get excited about Di Vicentis, but also know that the next few seasons, it's probably going to be a lot of stopgap goalies, and most likely they're not going to be good unless the Jets do some crazy thing and trade for like Usaceros. But unless Winnipeg really wants to try and be that competitive, can't see that being uh, the best choice personally. And we all know that the Jets don't really trade in division anyways. They apparently hate it and uh, are, are very much against it. So in the meantime, the, the Jets still have plenty of other questions. One of the biggest ones is who's going to be the first line center next season? We'll dive into that question and why it might be a little more complicated than expected in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. You've got to have every part fit just right. The next time you need parts and accessories, look no further than eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every fit, every part fits just right the first time around. All you have to do is just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check mark to know the part will fit. Or you get your money back. Just like in sports, confidence is in the name of the game. And that's the same when you shop with eBay Motors. They have a selection of over 122 million verified parts, and you'll be back in the game in no time. It's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices with ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers, and it only features eligible items. Exclusions apply. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for joining us again on today's episode of Locked On Jets. We are just talking about three major questions ahead of next season. And one of the big ones is who's going to be the goalie. Obviously there are no easy answers for that. And long-term, I think we all know that Di Vicentis is probably Winnipeg's man of the future, but he's like three to four years away, most likely, uh, maybe even longer if we're being honest, because he's like 19. So yeah, uh, another big question that the Jets are going to have is who's the first line center. And I think this question for me gets at a bigger question about what you do with Mark Shifley. For me, Shifley has made no real indication that he wants to resign. 
I don't think he should be resigned at this stage. I think if anything, it's time to let him go and find greener pastures elsewhere. For as much as Shifley has contributed to this team over the years, he's been a really successful player, um, one of Winnipeg's best draft and develop stories. But I think it's clear that he's been dissatisfied with management and with the direction of the team for many seasons. Um, it kind of kicked off towards the end of 2017-2018 after the Jets got eliminated. I think in the subsequent seasons, we started to see his frustration grow and grow as Winnipeg really didn't uh, invest in the right way in terms of building the team to keep being a like dy dynastic competitor. And, you know, the past three or four years, I would say it was especially bad for Shifley where he just was sort of there and present, but not really at his best. This season was kind of the first time when we really saw him get back into the game and look excited about hockey again. But then second half of the season, he was kind of a ghost. And that for me says a lot about where his mindset is and where the team's mindset is. And I feel they have both burned their bridges pretty aggressively. So it's time to part ways. But my concern is that the Jets are going to try and hold on to Shifley for at least part of the season because they know the biggest question that I have is who becomes the first line center if Shifley goes. And there's no real answer for that because Dubois is gone. Shifley is potentially gone. After that, you've got Lowry. Um, you've got Perfetti, who hasn't played center uh, for the Jets previously, but could do that certainly. Uh, David Gustafson. Maybe you bring back, I don't know, Kevin Stenland or something. And if you're asking me if any of those players are first line centers, the answer is no. The only one who would probably do that job well is is uh, for me, Cole Perfetti, and he's not really played that position before. So um, considering the center market is not going to be great, I just can't really see who else is going to step in and fill that void. I, I mean, there's been discussion of Kirby Doc from Montreal as part of the Dubois trade, but assuming that Doc is actually not coming because the Jets aren't trading Pierre-Luc Dubois to Montreal, you have to bring back a center from somewhere. Um, and that for me, I think, is a, a big question going forward. I would personally like to see, you know, one of Gabe Velarde or maybe um, Quentin Byfield join the Jets, but who knows uh, when that's going to be the case, if, if it's going to even happen. It's only a theoretical trade right now, and as of yet, we still haven't gotten a firm indication that the Kings are going to be the final destination. But as it is right now, you know, Winnipeg is kind of in a holding pattern, uh, figuring out whether Shifley is... Uh, a rental that they can afford to allow to stick around until the trade deadline, or if it's time to let him go over the summer. Again, I don't think it's an easy question. And I think for me, while I have arrived at an answer that I think is very clear, I can understand why the Jets who want to be competitive next season don't really feel letting Shifley go is, is the best choice. I feel like there's going to be more hesitance to trade him. And I feel like that for me is going to be a mistake, but at the end of the day, the Jets are going to have to find, you know, help down the middle from somewhere and I feel like the only way that you're really going to find it is probably through higher draft picks. And unless the Jets tank next season, Winnipeg is going to be kind of in that mushy middle again where, you know, finding that elite center talent may not be uh, as easy as you'd hope. Again, I do think the Jets could potentially make some trades for players who could play down the middle, but you have to be careful doing that because more than likely, if you're the one trying to acquire a top player, you're going to be giving up some pretty crazy value. And I think in Winnipeg's case, if it is, you know, in the cards for a rebuild sometime in the next few seasons, you're going to have to start banking up as much as you can, because all of these are just lotto, lottery tickets and lotto picks. Uh, you, you really have no idea what you're getting with them until um, the cards kind of fall and you sort of, you start to see who might slip to your pick. But I think for the Jets, you know, there's this idea that they want to compete now and still be a playoff team is going to get them into trouble, especially if, you know, Velarde is asked to shoulder all of the uh, responsibility, assuming he'd be the one coming back in the trade. I don't know yet. All I know is that the first line center role is kind of a big question mark. And I feel like it can't be Shifley because if it is, it means he's still around. And I feel like that is just um, a depreciating and declining asset at that point. But maybe the Jets surprise me and give us a real big uh, shock with a major move for a top end player. I have no idea what Winnipeg's plan is. They haven't really indicated any sort of direction that they're moving into, but let's hope that they pick a direction sooner rather than later and start making some moves because the longer they sit on all of this, the worse it's going to get. Now, the final question that I have for this team is which prospects are going to make the jump next season? Because there are a few guys who could potentially filter in, but I don't know how many of them are NHL ready. We'll talk about how 
Winnipeg might try and facilitate a couple of NHL debuts, and who might be the most likely to make the jump in just a little bit. Hello friends, and, uh, hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for rejoining us on tonight's episode of Locked On Jets. We're just talking about, uh, you know, Winnipeg's upcoming season and a couple of major questions that I had. And one of the surprising ones that I think is, is starting to gain steam is who exactly from Winnipeg's prospect pool is going to make the jump up into the NHL level. Now, I'm going to be honest, there aren't that many options that I think are, are likely to um, get call-ups and even NHL debuts. I feel like there are some players who make sense, but uh, in terms of players I could see realistically making that jump and being ready to eat NHL minutes, it, it's just a very limited pool of players. The first and, and best one that I think might uh, might make like a full-time spot is um, Christian Reichel. Reichel has kind of bounced in and out of the Jets lineup over the past couple of seasons. Uh, had, had a few spot games here and there, but he's not really been somebody who um, ended up cementing enough of like a full-time role, which I think is maybe a bit disappointing because I feel like Reichel was probably better than Saku Manalainen. And I think this time, if the Jets are trying to save money and do stuff internally, they could do with maybe bringing in uh, Reichel and seeing if he can earn a longer-term NHL spot. And look, he's not making his NHL debut. It's not his first rodeo. He's had a couple of games over the years, had some solid performances in the bottom six role, but now would be the time for him to really cement himself and steal like a third or a fourth line role. I think that he's good enough to be, you know, a, a, an everyday NHL starter of some sort, not one that I would trust a lot of duty to, but certainly a guy who I think could play a role for the Jets. And especially with Winnipeg trying to be really budget conscious, I think he makes a lot of sense in that respect. Another guy who might impress enough to eventually get a call up for the Jets is uh, Nikita Chiprikov. Uh, Chiprikov, of course, is making the move over to North America pretty soon here. Um, and Chiprikov, I, I feel like, is one of the more exciting Jets prospects. I don't think that he's necessarily like a highest tier kind of player, but I could see him um, eventually becoming the kind of guy who, uh, you know, might be a solid middle six player, maybe a third liner. Chiprikov, you know, has certainly shown flashes of promise in Russia. Now would be a really good time to see if he can um, translate that to the NHL or AHL levels. I feel like he'll start at the lower level first unless he has a really big, um, like um, yeah, like training camp or preseason camp. I think he's still got some some work to do with the moose. I feel like a season or two there would probably get him closer up to speed and maybe he earns a call up if he really has a big performance. But I feel like North America will probably take a little bit of time to get used to and it wouldn't shock me if he spends the entire year there uh, and and maybe even the entirety of next season or like the following season with the Moose. So, yeah, Chibrikov, probably a little bit more distant, but a player that I would circle on, on your list of names to get excited about. One guy that I think could potentially get actual minutes this year uh, is Daniel Torgerson. Torgerson, I feel like, hasn't really been as impressive for the Moose as I was hoping, but, he's, you know, in terms of like a solid middle six power winger, he's decent. I feel like I was hoping his his offensive numbers would take a jump this past year. Didn't really happen, though. I feel like he, if anything, kind of backslid a little bit. I think he also had an injury issue here and there. But Torgerson, if he does become an everyday player, would probably be a nice two-way fourth liner, uh, probably more in like the Kevin Stenlin mold, although I don't know that he's as defensively astute as Stenlin is. Torgerson has pretty soft hands for a guy his size. He is relatively mobile, so offensively he's got some jump. I just don't know if that really translates to being much more than like a third or a fourth liner. And as you can tell from this list of names that I've given you, most of these guys are are more in the depth side of things. If you're wondering when Lucius and Lambert and guys like that are likely to join, uh, it's, it's probably another couple of seasons. Lambert, I think, might be the closest between him and Lucius just because Brad is able to stay healthier, generally speaking. And it feels like it won't be long before he lights it up with the moose and gets closer to the NHL. But I feel like he's two to three years away, most likely. Uh, the Jets have a couple of other prospects that are interesting who have just recently joined. Um, Fabian Wagner, I think, is one of the bigger names that people are kind of like really excited about after having seen some of his World Juniors Team Suite and stuff. Wagner, you know, could be uh, a player to circle on your board for like a third line center role down the road. But in terms of like top six stuff, might be a little bit ambitious to get 
that uh, excited about him. But I think he could be a really nice rotational middle six player for the Jets of the future. Other than that, you know, Danny Zilkin will probably be an NHLer at some point. I have a lot of confidence in him, but again, probably two to three years away at least. A lot of these guys are kind of in that that range, and so you're starting to see two to three, maybe four years down the road being um, when this next Jets core is really going to start to take form. And so in the interim periods, we're going to be watching some rough hockey, and I think it's going to be a bit of a, a learning curve as the Jets try to get younger but still stay competitive and Obviously, those are, are directions that usually kind of move apart. Uh, I think we know that this Jets team is going to try to be good, but the reality is they probably won't be. So let me know who you want to make the jump next season. Which prospects are you most excited about? Do you think there's going to be a dark horse that really steals the attention and comes up? Drop your favorite prospects below in the social uh, in the comment section or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. But for tonight's show, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thanks so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. We will see you back here tomorrow for even more Jets content and more off-season content. But like I said for tonight's show, that is all the time that we have. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.